Hi, this is Rambo Sun One on Two, and I'll be VOD reviewing you today. Um, I'm a pretty experienced reviewer, I'd like to think. I've done probably a few dozen. Um, this season hasn't been great, but I'm usually around plat for DPS and tank, like low plat, and I'm usually high uh, plat and low diamond for support. I'd say this is probably an average SR range for me. I play a lot of Ana, a lot of hit scans. Um, I feel pretty functional in most of the supports, though. I basically, play Ana BAP. Um, I'm pretty decent at DPS as well, um, at least by this standard. Uh, it says you're 1026 or something like that, 1071, so bronze, I think. Yes. Um, before I start, let me get a few housekeeping things out of the way. First things first, you posted like four or five different matches and two of them had levers or something. I appreciate that you described them, but for future reference, just find a game where you feel like it went pretty average, it was a 6v6 and it was close, and then just post that. Don't post stomps, don't post when you get rolled, don't post when you roll people. Don't post when there's a lever. Just post what feels like a close average game because it stresses you, but you don't get your teeth kicked in enough to the point where you can't do anything. Um, that's where you learn the most. Uh, next thing is I notice a lot of comments you make on your games are, oh, I should have switched to XYZ. Oh, our comp wasn't that great. Blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, comp does a little bit, but to be completely frank, it doesn't really matter until about mid-plat, maybe higher. Um, especially not in bronze. In bronze, you could play whatever the fuck you want, and you'll do fine. Just, if you learn anything overall, it's that meta doesn't matter until about mid-plat, and, uh, yeah. That's basically it. Play what you're good at. Play what you're comfortable uh, comfortable with. Um. Anyways, let's see. So you go from Anna to Brig. Blah 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 blah. Over time, mm, you switch. Staggered. But I don't know. As for self reviewing, there are some mistakes you can look out for and say, "Oh, I fucked up." Um. Personally, I can't really self-review too well, so just ask people in the sub. You'll probably get plenty of help through gold. Once you hit plat, it dries up a lot. Anyways, so let's get on to the actual review now that I'm done ranting. Just try to give you some information for some overall stuff in the future. Um, first things first, you always want to look at your team comp and see how it works. So what I see is you've got a Bronze Widow, so that's not going to be too hot. Uh, you've got a Nano Rhyme and Nano Visor, that could work nicely. Diva is an okay-ish target, but probably not optimal. I really like the Anna Mercy combo because Anna can DPS and do stuff and Mercy can just kind of keep her up. They're great peeling for each other. You got Shatter Diva, but that's kind of a weird combo. Um, yeah, so that's basically what you got going on. The comp itself isn't really too strong, but it's not too weak either. You've got solid heals, solid peels, um, solid high ground control, some okay mobility. You know, overall, the only thing I would be concerned about your comp is the fact that you have a Widowmaker somewhere below gold. That's about the only meta that matters is heroes that are too hard to play at this rank. Which are basically only Widow and maybe Doom or something. Anyways, so let's take a look Nine. about what you do. Incoming. 
stop the pain. Take a deep breath. Now, let's achieve our objective. So, for this first point, you know, it's One. not going to be too much of a risk at this level. Stop the Some pain. opportunities that you missed. The first being is that you can stand roughly where your widow is and you can land a pretty meaty maid right here. Get some alt charge. Maybe even help get a pick. I don't know. It's usually worth getting. The second thing is that this is a very open, high ground heavy map. Which means you should always watch out for a widow. You should watch out for a widow on basically any map. But there are some like this or the first point of King's Row or Junker Town. Where you just really, really gotta assume that they have a sniper until proven otherwise. Um... And you basically want to treat snipers like they'll insta-kill you if you're in their line of sight. At this rank, that's not the case, but it's a good habit to create. Um, so yeah, basically, one, you can land an aid. Two, you kind of want to be hanging out back here. Maybe on this high ground or this high ground if you're feeling cheeky. But assume that some widow will come either here or here, or to this bridge, and just headshot you, because you're going to be one of the first targets. And if you go down, your team's not going to have a fun time. Enemy team. This was an opportunity for an offensive sleep. Um, I don't completely blame you for not using it yet, but the reason you wouldn't use it is in case they dive right about now, which is usually what happens. You know, you'll have some DPS go up here, and then you'll have some people dive here. Um, yeah. So, it's okay if you hold on to your sleep, but just know if you see a Reaper teleport, that's usually a good opportunity. few things here, um, generally poor your ability use. First things first, you could get a pretty good anti here, and if you wanted to play defensively, um, you could hold it for this upcoming dive with ball and stuff. Let me go back a little bit. Let me go back. Sorry, I thought I was earlier than I was. You scoping in here is not going to do much, because you're probably not going to pick anyone off. That's why the nade is good, because you can land it, and then you cannot be line of sight. Enemy Sleep would be offensive, we talked about that. The other good place to use sleep would be about when this shit happens. Next thing is that you use your nade immediately. Well, sorry, I'm going over too many things. First thing, you should not be here. You're standing in the center of your team. This is why you start getting knocked around and taking damage and stuff like that. That's why you want to hang out back here, primarily so you don't get headshot from bridge, but also because all this shit's going to happen over here and you don't want to be the focus of that. You want to be over here as someone just in the back. Also, some assholes usually come up here or here. Second thing is you use Nade on Diva immediately. She is fine. You can just help uh, heal her with normal fire pretty easily. And now that you use Nade, you actually kind of need it just to keep yourself up. Third thing is Ball slammed. Um, you know, I still miss sleeps on Ball, even at roughly Diamond. But generally speaking, you want to flick down to the ground with most flankers because they'll be right in your face so you want to like flick lower than you think you would need to fourth thing is kind of an overall thing uh for maps like this in dorado is as a team a common mistake that happens is they see that the payload gets here they freak out and they drop and the problem is that they don't all drop at the same time. 
So you'll have like a Reinhardt drop alone, for instance, and then everyone collapses on him and he just melts. So because of that, when the payload gets about to this corner, you want to take your team and you want to rotate back here. Notice how I said rotate back here, not drop. You don't want to drop here unless you have ample time and space. Dropping here is basically suicide as anyone. You don't want to do it if there's any enemies anywhere close. So if you're on here or Dorado and someone gets there, just take your team and rotate. Um, yeah. Standing dead center, so you got knocked off. You missed the nade as well, but honestly, with this positioning, it doesn't really matter what you do. This will only for a minute. Notice how people dropped and everyone just melts. Um, you can take advantage of this on offense as well. Okay, here you switch to break. Um, frankly, Anna was fine. Um, since you went Brig, your team now has less heals, especially with Mercy, who would normally pocket the snipers pretty heavily. Um, this is not a good pick. It's not a bad one. You know, there is still Hammond, but Anna has Sleep Dart. So, honestly, all you really did is get rid of some healing and throw away some alt charge um like i said in bronze the most important thing is that you play what you're good at but i would not say you were being countered as anna here the problem with your anna here is mainly that you were standing here and you couldn't land your abilities if you stood back here like this fight would go really nicely like, watch this. That doesn't matter. Oh, there's Reaper. Sleep. Oh, he slams. Sleep. You're doing this? Oh, they're low. You can heal. Oh, I need to heal. Oh, they drop. Let me rotate. Drop. And then you can heal. So, with slightly better positioning, you'd be a lot more effective. You basically don't want to stand in the center of your team. And because you went Brig, you can't actually heal too much. You didn't die on point, but it was a good attempt. Now, unfortunately, I think your team's going to get staggered. So for here, frankly, you're not doing anything. You can't do anything because you're at range. Which is another reason why Anna's nice, because this is a very uh, long range map. But even if, let's say, Briggs just what you're hell bent on. If you can't do anything, you, you're not going to achieve anything by standing here. You, the best thing you can do right now is just not take damage. To stand off a little bit to the side, just right here, you're sniper proof, you're dive proof. You can go into action if you need to. It's just, notice how you stand in the middle. And is just, you guys are taking a lot of damage you don't need to. Here, you definitely could have stunned that Reinhardt and stopped the charge. Um, you had that on cooldown. Or off cooldown, I should say. Somehow your team carries. Good job, team. I can do better than that. Let 
This isn't really affecting you right now since you're not taking damage, but if you keep your shield up, it doesn't regenerate. So, only put it up if you need to. Also ignore the chat, my friend likes doing some very unholy copy copypasta. That was a good block. Oh. When you get anti, that's when you go passive. Have a good time to heal your mercy. There's someone. Okay, you're doing fine here. You can throw your soldier heal. Okay, so you're down, Widow. Soldier's running. This is a good ult. Okay, um, your team either had bad spawn or they tried to fight here, and you saw how that ended. Thankfully, the enemy committed two alts to it, um, but right now, the best thing you can do is not die and not take damage. So if you hear a fuck ton of alts and they're all shattered and you hear all this stuff, just literally back off as far as you can, because this point is really easy to snowball and you don't want them rushing you and staggering you. So there's not really a need for you to be standing here. By keeping your shield up, you don't let it recharge. So do you notice how it's Keep staying at 72. If it's low, just back off, put the shield down, and use this natural cover. Natural cover has infinite health. I swear it won't break. Just chill here, wait for it to recharge, push back in. Because by keeping exposing yourself and keeping your shield up, you're just not letting yourself um, recharge. So now your shield's broken, and you're still in the open. Nice boot. Nice. Right now, bring the soul is fine. You kind of just walked into the mines, not gonna lie. Um, it's a little hard to do with this point, but people think that you need to hop all over the point to stall. Um, the first thing you gotta evaluate is, okay, there's a shit ton of mines preventing me from doing my job. Do I actually have to be the one stalling? It only takes one person on cart. It only takes one. This is fine. Here I would say, you got a shit ton of people. You don't need to be the one touching. You've got a diva. And 
If you were to touch, you you go guns blazing. You go sprinting into this minefield. You're like, I must hit the ball. You don't need to do that, and you do fuck all for damage. So, if you're hell bent on contesting, the best thing you can do, just in general, like I said, it's hard for this particular part of the map. But you can um, just take a corner like this. And you can just go on, touch a little bit, back off, go on, touch a little bit, back off. And you can do this over and over and over. And, you know, you die pretty quickly on this point, but you don't need to, like, run around the point to contest it. You just need a tiny little sliver. Okay, so your team is fine. Team fight's over. You don't have anything for ults besides maybe yours that's fine I'd rally good job you healing now Could definitely rush that reaper. Let me patch that up. Okay, so you're down one. You're down one. Reaper's up top. He's gonna drop into your team soon. The Anna somehow got the high ground. Good for her. We so really don't know what to do here. You don't know what to do. Just take cover. Don't take damage. I do with doom, but you know, I'm fine with spending health pack. That's what I do. Your soldier could use some love. I kind of want to chase down that soldier, you kind of forget about him. Heal the hero. Done that, please. I didn't see if you had bash on, but um, I'm too lazy to go back. You do okay as Brig, it's just you kind of start seeing red and start charting people. You gotta like target focus a little bit. Know why you're playing Brig and what you're doing. Okay. Um. So let's see what your team comp is. Um. You know, team comp and combos don't really happen at this rank, but I'll at least uh, say theoretically how it should work, roughly. Um. You have a nano blade. You got nano Ryan, nano visor. Perhaps Nano Diva, you can damage boost the soldier. That should be your primary job. Um, and thanks to the Diva, you can probably abuse high ground a lot. If you play Mercy, learning the super jump can be very beneficial, especially on a map like this, because if you can stay on high ground, you'll be pretty happy because you don't have to awkwardly stand in the middle. You can be up here or you can come up here like there's a lot of high ground you can use and as mercy that's pretty nice so the super jump takes a little bit of practice i'd say like between games is a good time to do it it'll probably take you maybe 
20 minutes, half an hour of practice, which is about six games. Okay, so he's out of position, not your problem. The best thing you can do is just keep pushing. You can use the payload as cover. So, one of the general strategy problems that your team's doing right now is that they're seriously trying to take over this high ground. And, you know, they're, they're doing it lightly enough for it's fine, but to be honest, this high ground's very hard to take over. At most, you might be able to hard dive a Bastion or something. So, what you really want to do is you want your mobile people to be distracting up here maybe get a pick but they're not trying to sustain up here what you want to do while things are going on over here is you want to use this card as cover and get it down to here on defense I mentioned that people tend to drop here and get shredded this can be used to your advantage so it's usually in your best interest to get the sucker underground um, because then you have the side positioning, which is very strong, and they drop and you can melt them, or best case scenario, they rotate over here, in which case you get a bit of free push. So, you did okay, you kept your team up, but if you just push this payload, it creates a lot of pressure. Good job damage boosting the soldier. If you knew the super jump, you could jump up to here and then you could just stand here and you'd be in really good shape. I'll go over how to do it, but honestly, it's going to take a lot of practice. down but this is resible now you're two down it's not even worth it but they're one down so you've got a net one loss so here you have kind of a conflict um let me this just comes down to game sense so right now, you have your full team, I think, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I think you have everyone. I could be wrong, but I think you've got them all. Where's D.Va? Yeah, you've got everyone. So, something that you could actually do. This is what smart teams do, is that usually people have bad spawn and stuff here, and or at least they're just not generally set up. So what you could do is you could leave the Ana on cart, and then you could pop your alt, and then tell your team to push really fucking hard. And then what this would do is hopefully stagger them and get you to about here pretty safely. Um, that is probably the optimal option. It's not actually best for everyone to stand on cart because, you know, it gets faster and faster up to three people, but it's pretty much not worth it. Whenever you take a point like this, you generally want one person to stay on and you want the rest of you to steamroll what you can. Especially since this choke really fucking sucks to break. So if you can take it for free, that's in your best interest. Right here, you're two down. They're one down, but this isn't even worth fighting. As soon as those people died, it was in your team's best interest to play really passive until people respawn and then repush. But right now, you're fighting a 4v5. Okay, 
Okay, 3v5. Here you see your your uh, your Anna sleep someone. And she says I need assistance. And then you have your diva who's feeding one versus whatever the fuck this is. This diva no matter how hard you pocket her here, she's going to melt. So what you want to do is you want to keep your Anna up or possibly even pick this with some damage boosting. It's unlikely, but you you gain nothing from pocketing this diva. Absolutely nothing. So you made your decision here. It's the wrong decision. But you know, at least you made one. Good job keeping Anna up. I would actually damage boost her so they can burst down that um ball. I don't know how I ever played Mercy without the super jump. Heroes never die for a price. to watch your team just blew all their alts on a severely lost fight so let's break this down okay so you're semi even ish I think Diva is a little bit staggered but it's whatever you guys have a shit ton of alts so mercy alt is in my opinion most effective for initiating a fight what that means is you pop it right now because it makes your team play aggressively and it gives them the damage and the sustain to do so and it gives your team an advantage and it stuns the enemy team this is kind of just a general alt thing when you're heading into an even team fight you want to use your alt combos or just your alts before they do because that gives you the advantage. So that's what their enemy ball does. So I want you to notice that he uses his mines before you use your Valk. And because he initiated the even fight with his alt, it created a 5v6 and picked the soldier. And it made everything you guys did futile. Because he did this before you used Valk, that soldier dies, and because that soldier dies, this fight's effectively lost. Never Your Anna dies, pardon. Which is even worse. Right here, this is just wasted alts. You know, Anna dying is pretty severe, but if you have good alts, you can kind of power through it. But, honestly, it's kind of wasted. So, Ryan gets a pretty decent shatter. And he charges. Since he's taking a fuck ton of damage, I'll agree with healing here. Something to note is that you you can fly. You have your ult on. You don't need to be sitting here in the soldier's fire. You can fly to where this Genji is and be perfectly safe. You don't need to s hover here. Like, watch this. You're taking so much damage you don't need to. You, you can fly and you're hovering on the ground. Okay, so... So, you know, Ryan dies. This is now a 4v6. Genji commits to a bad ult. So... Ryan was taking a lot of damage. This Genji is not. So what you want to do right now is A, with your ult, you should have been up here by now and you could have just stood here and watched all this happen from above. 
but ignoring positioning, you should be damage boosting this Genji. And because you're not damage boosting him, things die slower, which means you take more damage. So notice how his health's really high? And you give up and you start pocketing your D.Va. So this Genji was kind of your win condition. And yes, it's good to keep these people up, but it's more important to pocket this Genji. Because if he wipes out two, three people, your spawn is closer than theirs. So even if these people die and this Genji wipes out whatever is over here, your team will respawn and theirs will not and you guys can continue doing work. So A, you abandon your Genji, you didn't damage boost him, and you have poor positioning. B, you try to res here and everyone's just using alts. Look at all these wasted alts. This has been a lost fight ever since your Anna died. So all I can say to do better there besides yelling at your team is position better and pocket your Genji and don't be afraid to use that damage boost with something like Blade. Because you guys just used everything besides Nano. You used 5 ults and you lost because you used it at a disadvantage. Doing a lot of healing full health. Okay, this is reasonable. A little tip that I always do as Mercy is to spin around when you uh, res. It makes you a little harder to hit. Okay, the soldier's doomed. They're doomed. Okay, so this is a lost fight. Please don't use your ult right now. Do you run? Ugh. You don't know this yet, but if you had a super jump, you could be up here and this would be the best place for you or off to the side. You're kind of standing dead center and it doesn't really matter because you guys are on this side of the map but you're standing in the open a lot um, and that just puts you in danger and makes you less effective. So then, that's kind of unfortunate to be honest. This is why you wanted to pop alt when you very first started pushing because you can see how much it really sucks to break through there. And they're not even using high ground. Honestly, I would probably play Batiste or Lucio right now. Lucio to get you guys the fuck through choke. Batiste to put a field down if you guys need it and get the fuck through choke. Right now, your utility as Mercy is meant to damage boost your DPS, and frankly, you're kind of just heal botting your team right now. So, if you're going to heal bot your team, play BAP or something. If you're going to pocket your DPS who's doing fuck all over here, then pocket your DPS who's doing fuck all. Mercy is designed to put a lot of weight behind one DPS. Or just one character, but it's pretty much going to be DPS. So, notice all this time that you're healing a full health Reinhardt and it's doing absolutely nothing. You could literally be standing in spawn and you'd be doing the same amount of work right now. So, what you want to do instead is pocket the DPS, and if you ins insist on standing in the center of your team, at least p 
like damage boost someone with a little bit of range like literally damage boost the Anna it'd be more useful than healing this Reinhardt damage boost the soldier damage boost anyone you're just healing full health allies you're not doing anything you guys are standing and you're eating spam Okay, so they just blew their fucking load. What's that, five volts? You guys should be happy and you should say, hooray, we have three ults now. Just res the baby diva. This is usually a pretty bad idea because baby divas kind of useless. It'd be in your best interest to pop all and stall point and pocket someone, please. No, don't go battle mercy. see people ult, like that Dragon Blade or the Reinhardt, that's when you pocket the shit out of them. Victory. Okay, so, I can tell this is a bronze game. There's a lot of things that could be improved. You did okay in some aspects, so, let's, let's just talk a bit. So, your team did some very bronzy things they stood in choke for like ever they didn't push they suicided they popped a shit ton of vaults into a very lost fight so what can you personally do as a support the first thing you can do is you can use something like a nano or you know what pretty much any support alt will do it and it's kind of just like a little prod it's it's like a it's okay you can push now so if you're in this situation and your team's kind of just dilly dallying if you pop alt and you fly through and you start damage boosting your team will actually press w Never die. Next thing oh, is just Christ. timing. I talked about this. You really want to use this Valk before anyone uses anything. Um, next thing is that you played Mercy and, you know, during some team fights, you knew your place. You damage boosted um, your DPS like you should. But a lot of the time, you just stood in the center of your team and you healed full health allies. So, you have an Anna. Anna will keep your tanks pretty happy. Like, you might need to help them a little bit, but you should spend maybe 10-15% of your time here. And you should spend the other 80-85-90% pocketing the fuck out of s your DPS. So, if I were playing Mercy right now, I would probably fly to this Genji and enable him and damage boost him and make him build ult as fast as I can. Um, so yeah, as Mercy, you need to know your place is to pocket your DPS and damage boost whenever you can get away with it. If you find yourself healing full health people, you're doing something wrong. Next thing is just some administrative stuff. You've played three supports in this particular match, and your post makes you talk about team comp and 
a lot of different things like that. And what this tells me is that you're not comfortable with anyone in particular. You just play whatever support you think might be slightly more optimal. So, I think the approach you should be taking is basically two-tricking-ish. I personally only really play Anna and Bap. I might, might switch to like a, like a Lucio or a Mercy if the situation calls for it, but 95% of the time I play Bap or I play Anna. And that's what I do. So, there's a lot of small tips and tricks and positioning things and ability usage things that each character has. And if you do what you do here, where you just change at a moment's notice, you're not going to learn any of this stuff. So, for example, let's say you were a Mercy 1 trick. If you were a Mercy 1 trick, you might learn how to super jump, and instead of just standing here with your team, you might be on high ground, and you might be pocketing your DPS, and you might be making fast alt charge, and you might be pressing Q to make your team push, and you might initiate with that, and you might be really hard to kill. Or let's say you were an Ana 1 trick. Um, you might, in the beginning of the game, you might stand a little bit back and you might um, you might know that you don't need your nade for someone taking some pretty easily healed damage and you might know just how to flick your sleep darts and you might know you know how to play back and you might have a nice viewpoint and have time to think and coordinate alt things. If you're a brig one trick, you might know that you need to try not to take damage at a distance. And, um, you know, I don't play a lot of brig. You might be like, I will bodyguard my other support. Like, each of them have very specific purposes, but. A lot of them you can kind of one or two trick, especially people like Anna and Bap. So I, I guess that's a very long ramble to say pick one or two supports and just play them. If you have a Pharah, you know, sure, go Mercy. But pick two supports and get really good at them and play them in almost every situation. Like, don't switch unless you get hard countered. My next piece of advice is... Um, use alts early. That's really what you can do to make your team push as a support. Is You can pop a support alt early and it gives them courage enough to push. Third thing I'd say is... Um, it, there's a lot of things. I, I guess if you're playing Mercy and you have alt, you can fly wherever the fuck you want to. So you don't need to sit on payload when you're flying. You can be in the air and you should be pocketing people. Um, frankly, there's a lot of... Um, there, there's a lot of things you can improve. But don't take that poorly. That means that there's some pretty straightforward things you can learn. Um, so overall, pick some characters. Uh, send another video. Please make it pretty even. Um, I'd be happy to do another review or you can get someone else to. It's the same to me. Um, and thank you for watching.